Imagine if your child ate some contaminated meat and suddenly, he turns into a bloodthirsty zombie and starts attacking his classmates. More and more children become zombies and they start attacking the teachers who run for their lives. That's exactly what happens in the 2014 movie called Cooties. But before we begin, beware of spoilers, watch out and take care. The movie begins in a chicken factory in Illinois where chicken nuggets are being made and then distributed out. We then see a bad batch of chicken containing a mutant virus arriving at Fort Chicken Elementary School. A fourth grade student named Shelly Linker consumes one of the infected black dotted chicken nuggets. We are then introduced to a young aspiring but unsuccessful writer named Clint Hansen who lives at home with his mom. He decides to take on a temporary part-time job as a substitute teacher at Fort Chicken Elementary. It is an unlucky start to the day for him when the security guard Rick mistakes him for a drug dealer. Next, we see Clint's car being blocked in by another teacher Wade and he is unable to open the door. Next, he is seen talking to the vice principal when his phone rings and gets confiscated. There is a strict no cell phone rule that applies to everyone in the school. Clint then reveals that he used to be a student at Fort Chicken Elementary School and knows his way around. In the next scene, we see Clint in the staff room where he struggles to interact. He thinks that the teachers working there are really strange. A teacher called Rebecca shows him a panic alarm she wears. She explains if anyone tries anything with her, she presses the button to alert the police. Another teacher called Tracy who is Wade's girlfriend used to go to school with Clint and had a massive crush on him. They are both happy to see each other and he discusses the book he is currently writing about a possessed boat. We are then taken to Clint's classroom. Two boys named Patriot and Dink begin to laugh and tease a girl called Shelly. She is seen with large swollen pimples on her face from eating the infected chicken nuggets. As he gets to know his students, he realizes that Patriot is distracted by his phone. When he tries to take the phone off him, Patriot threatens him and tells him he will tell everyone he tried to touch him inappropriately. Clint decides he doesn't want the trouble and starts his lesson. Patriot continues teasing Shelly and then reaches over and pulls her pigtail. Shelly is enraged by this and gets up and attacks him by biting his face. Clint immediately takes Patriot to the nurse. Outside, Patriot's friend Dink confronts Shelly when she attempts to dig her way out of the school. Dink plans on reporting Shelly to the principal. Upon hearing this, Shelly scratches him and infects him with the virus. We then see Dink running around the playground infecting other students. Back in his van, Rick is intoxicated with drugs and notices Dink running around the playground attacking other children. The virus is spreading like wildfire around the school. Rick reports the incident to Sims, the vice principal, as he rushes out to the playground to see. Sims is horrifically attacked by all the infected kids as they pin him to the ground gruesomely killing him. While this is happening, Patriot is inside the school, he is looking deranged as he sneaks into the principal's office. We then see the teachers in the staff room who are distracted by the noise in the playground. Rebecca immediately presses the emergency button on her panic alarm to alert the police. When Wade makes his way outside, the children see him and make him his next target. Wade quickly runs into the school and looks the door behind him leaving the infected children outside. Meanwhile, Patriot has disconnected all the phone lines in the school and all the teachers are seen panicking. In the next scene we see Dave a police officer arriving at the school. Unaware of the situation, he tries talking to the children to understand what is going on. All of a sudden one of the children bites his fingers off, he is shocked and quickly runs towards his car when he is attacked by another kid from behind. We then see the teachers discussing a way to escape from the school when Wade is attacked by Patriot. When he starts attacking the teachers, they all fight back together and Rebecca tries to pepper spray him but it doesn't work. When Patriot tries attacking another teacher, they fall back into a filing cabinet and Wade quickly locks the door. The teachers quickly leave the staff room and run through the library when they see another child there. They are relieved to find that it is Calvin who has not been infected and together they find a safe place to hide. Patriot has managed to open the doors and let in all the infected children. Calvin tries to tell the teachers all the children have been infected by a disease called cooties but they don't listen to him. When Shelly peers through the window, Doug examines her face and realizes that Calvin was right. Wade is becoming increasingly impatient and tells everyone that they need to escape now. Clint suggests that they need to go to the principal's office to call for help unaware that all phone lines have already been disconnected. 
Lucy suggests waiting for the parents to arrive when they come to collect the children. At 3 o'clock the teachers carefully make their way to the rooftop. We then see the first lot of mums arrive to pick up their children. We see Racer's mother trying to get her son's attention and when he comes and jumps in the car, he then brutally attacks his baby brother and his mother. As the teachers watch on in disbelief, Tracy is suddenly grabbed by Tamara by her ankle, luckily she is not infected and they all quickly help her up. Fearing for their lives, the teachers run down towards the gymnasium when Doug is suddenly attacked by Dink. Wade sees this and has no choice and picks up a fire extinguisher and kills him. We then see Doug examine Dink's body to find out more about the virus. Meanwhile, Doug has dissected Dink's body and shares his finding with the other teachers. Doug informs them that the bodies are slowly decomposing but the children can still function but are no longer humans. Doug explains how Clint and Tamara are not infected in the same way because they have gone through puberty. The virus only affects the younger children. Next, the lights go out and everyone starts to panic. Calvin is seen asleep on the floor and one of the teachers reveals he has diabetes. Just then, a loud noise is heard and someone enters the room. To everyone's relief, it is Mr. Hadachi the school janitor. Their joy is short-lived when just behind him we see a bunch of infected children who break the door down and run in. The teachers make a run for it and escape to the basement taking Calvin with them. They search for food for him when they suddenly hear an emergency warning on the radio. A mandatory evacuation has been broadcasted in the Fort Chicken neighborhood due to the highly dangerous virus spreading all over town. Clint comes up with a plan and suggests to escape through the ducts in the walls but first he decides to get some food from the vending machine to save Calvin. Lucy speaks to Clint through a radio as she guides him through. Next, we see Wade getting increasingly jealous and he tells everyone that they will all die if Clint fails. Lucy finally has enough of his behavior and she climbs up the ladder and joins Clint. Clint is finding it difficult to get something from the vending machine when suddenly an infected child appears on a bicycle, he quickly hides but unfortunately, the vending machine switches on and the lights come on. Clint quickly grabs food from the machine for Calvin when the zombie child sets his eyes on him. We see Clint heading back to the duct where Lucy is waiting. He manages to throw the food down the duct to the group and informs them to close it. Clint and Lucy make it out the other side to another room and quickly trap the children in the ducks behind them. We then see Clint confessing to Lucy that he has feelings for her. While talking, they share a kiss which is interrupted by Wade who apologizes to Lucy down the radio. We then see Clint telling the other teachers that he has a bunch of pills that they can try and give to them to finish them off. The teachers gather what they can from the classroom to use as weapons. While they discuss the details of their plan, they are unaware that other people have been listening to them talking. Clint, Lucy and the other teachers making their way outside to the car park. The zombie children quickly follow but most of the teachers manage to get on a truck and escape. Unfortunately, Wade and Hitachi get left behind, when Lucy tries to go back to help, the rest of them pull her back into the vehicle and tell her it's too dangerous. We then see Wade who sacrifices himself to save everybody else. Next, the teachers all escape in a truck when Patriot is seen on the roof. While Clint is driving, he attacks him through the window causing the van to swerve. Clint slams on the brakes sending Patriot flying onto the floor. To make sure he is finished off, he reverses and crushes him against the tree. The teachers are then seen arriving at the next town Danville. They run out of fuel and notice that the town has been deserted. They have no choice but to get out and walk over to the local electronics shop where they learn that the virus has spread across the whole country. Doug tells everyone that if he is able to get hold of a piece of the infected chicken, he could make a vaccine to cure the disease. Out of nowhere, they are quickly surrounded by several infected children. They all make a run for it and barricade themselves inside a children's entertainment building. Inside they come across the leftovers from a birthday party and retrieve a piece of contaminated chicken. Doug hopes to use this in hope of developing a vaccine. In the next scene, the teachers are cornered in the playroom by Shelley and the other infected children. To everyone's surprise, they look around to see Wade and Hitachi arrive in a van driven by Rick. We then see Wade spraying the children with some kind of liquid while the rest of the teachers jump into the van. Wade manages to trap the children inside the playroom. Clint then realizes that the liquid Wade has used is actually gasoline. 
Wade quickly sets light to the gasoline setting the whole building on fire. We then see Shelley and the rest of the infected children burned to death inside. In the final scene we see everyone escape and drive somewhere safe and the movie ends there. If you want to see more of such movie recaps, hit the subscribe button to become part of our movie family.